in a way, in many organisations, risk management seems to be as a kind of specific, discrete, offline activity. They'll all go into a room and have a risk workshop around a particular project or a particular set of activities. Then they'll come back into the workspace and, and just carry on working in, in, as normal with no thought for risk management. Is, is, is that how you see it? Almost. Mm. Uh, in the minds of regulators and people who write about risk management, we very much seem to have this image of the separate risk management process. Even though, strangely, we all think that's a bad idea. We all think that managing risk as part of core management activities is the best way to go. And uh, most people who aren't involved with this, they, they also agree. Um, and there must be risk management, good risk management, going on in ordinary meetings in companies and other organisations. So that is happening, but we also have this idea of these separate activities and separate meetings with separate documents and databases and that's all really rather strange uh, quite honestly. Yeah no I can see that because it, it is separate and it's just not related to our normal daytime activities. Yeah. Um, so where I was going with the book is, is to try to uh, pack it with lots of ideas for how you could change the way you do things so that you're dealing with uncertainty more effectively as you do the core activities of your job. Yes, yes, yeah, I mean, this, this perception of risk ma management that you talk about, which most people have, that it's a discrete activity, that it's rather structured and controlled and rather boring and generally involves internal auditors and other people who wear pinstripe suits, um, that's, that's kind of not what you're saying. You, you actually take a very different approach when you're writing about it. Do you want to, to, to explain a little bit about that? Um, yes, actually pinstripe suits would be quite flashy for an auditor. <laughs> They're grey. Okay. And as you see, I'm wearing a black today because mm. I'm an ex-auditor. It's, um, yeah, I think that one of the influential groups here has been the big external audit firms um, because they promoted ideas about risk management very, very effectively in companies and to regulators. Clearly they're not the only people who've influenced how risk management has developed, but that's the sort of uh, influence there has been. And, and they're very focused on sensible management and making selections and so on, and they're very focused on audit activities. What's missing out of all that is the creativity, the flow of ideas, mm. and that's really important to getting good results. Because you can prioritise all you like, but if you don't have any good ideas for improvements, then that's going to be the end result of your project. No good ideas for improvements. Matthew, you've had some feedback from people who've read the book. What do you think they get most out of it? What's the best value that they'll get out of it? I've had, I've had uh, people writing to me who um, are in various different roles, and it's really exciting to hear that people have sometimes, at least, used the book as it was intended to be used. Um, they've used it to pump their brains full of good ideas so that they're able to tackle the, the issues that they have at work more creatively and come up with better ideas for improvements in their businesses. And uh, that, I think, is the most exciting part. I wrote it to help people transform their ability to come up with good new ideas for improving the way they work, and it's great when it happens. Right. Okay. Good.